Today we're checking out G.I. Joe Operation Blackout. Thanks to Game Mill Entertainment for sponsoring this video and letting us check out the game. This is a new team-based third-person shooter. It's available on Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4. So I've been on a bit of a G.I. Joe kick lately. So this game came in a really good time. Because I started collecting the uh, G.I. Joe Classified series. Because, I mean, they're just like amazing like look how big they are and i remember the figures being a lot smaller than that so they made them bigger again yeah in the 1960s when gi joe started they had the huge figures and then the 80s came along and they're like oh i guess it was like star wars because star wars had the little figures and they want to make things cheaper and all that so they had the little figures but where we are today is that they sort of i guess reimagined gi joe and now you have all these original characters but it's kind of like so they, they think, have their own thing going so, on. So let me let me talk a little bit about like my journey. Like yeah, I was I stopped looking at GI Joe. Yeah, you know I'm like I'm looking at Transformers. I'm looking at other properties. I'm not doing GI Joe. Yeah. So but then they relaunched this new website where it, what, they showed the history. They showed all the characters and like the art was really good. And then they're like, oh, we're coming out with this new series, and it's going to be amazing. It's going to be all of that. Yeah, from what I get, they're kind of rebooting it, right? Or, or yeah, sort of, kind of reimagining it. Reimagining it a little bit. And so I got the figures. I'm like, I'm really into this. And then all of a sudden, we get asked to do this video on this on the game. And I'm like, oh wow, it features the the characters of the figures that I've been collecting. Yeah. Recently. Right. So so you know, Duke's there, Cobra Commander, Storm Shadow. So uh, it has Snake the classic Eyes, characters. Yeah. All the characters, but they're the the characters tied in with the figures. And I really feel like we haven't had that integration. Since the original G.I. Joe line had the cartoon to go with it, it had... I think it was originally comic. Yeah, the the, the Marvel comics. So yeah, originally G.I. Joe had comics, and they did that because they wanted to give it uh, some lore behind it. So that when you know kids go to the store and they want to get the figure, they already have a sort of mythology to uh, you know connect the kid to it. So that when you're playing with the toys, you have all these like stories in your head already right. to make it more fun. Yeah, so they had the comic, they had the the Sunbow animation show, they had the the show later on, they had the NES games, which are based on like the later ones, like the Captain Gridiron era, right. or, like, and they're great games by the way. The I thought NES those were based ones. on like more like the Deke ones, no? Or, yeah, or, they're, or, they're based or, for on the later, yeah, the later line a little bit. But now we have this game, we have Operation Blackout, and I enjoyed it as more than just a nostalgic game. And I enjoyed it because it was easy to pick up and play. You got away with it this time, Cobra Commander. I was already enjoying these guys, and I got to see all the characters and the version of the character that is available now. Right. You know, it's not like it's an old version or a different one or reimagined. But, like, I sat down and I played this game, and it starts with Cobra Commander attacking the USS flag. And I'm like, wow, that's awesome. Because every kid wanted the flag. Now, my, my parents told me, we don't have any room in our you know twin house for a gigantic aircraft carrier. I feel like in that respect, this game gives you what you right, want right off the bat. Yeah. You know a lot more about G.I. Joe than I do. From the smaller amount that I know about G.I. Joe, I was like, okay, even I recognize all this stuff. When I was a kid, I, I went over to one of my friend's house and I walked into his living room and he had the flag on the ground and that thing was like enormous. Yeah. And I that like has always stuck out in my head. I was like, wow, there's never was a toy that that was that, that, was that crazy. So you start the game and it's like, I felt like they give you, I was at least like, okay, they're giving you exactly what you want. It's kind of like the first time I ever played Rogue Squadron on GameCube. Yeah. When you start Rogue Squadron on GameCube, you go in that game, what are you doing? You're in the trench run immediately. It's not like you have to play it for 45 hours to get to that point. Right. So with this game, I was like, they give it to you right I, off the And bat. I love, like, like, Cobra Commander, like, I love his weapon. He has this gi gigantic, like, handgun mm -hmm. that just takes out, like, all the Joes with one shot. Because he's, like, the, the guy, you know? He's and, and you're going around, and you're just executing. The cutscenes um, are... Uh, sort of like comic style, you right? Know, where it just shows. So it's it's like watching a moving comic book, kind yeah. of. Um, yeah, it definitely feels like you're watching a show. In that the interactions between the characters, it's almost like you could see them scripting out like an old style episode. It seems like an episode, yeah. You know that kind of thing. Um, 
it's crazy, you know, the beginning of this, the story of this game is that Cobra wins. Like, Cobra is sitting in the Oval Office. And it's crazy seeing the Oval Office with, like, the Cobra <laughs> flags right. on it. That's, like, the crazy, like, like propaganda It was, imagery. like, creepy. It's creepy, yeah. right, to think about. You got this crazy story. It I reminds... feel like there was even an episode back then, or maybe I'm thinking of X-Men, where the same exact yeah. thing happens, like, back then. Anyway. It, it makes me feel a lot like Days of Future Past, like yeah. the X-Men storyline. Oh, line. there you go. Like, there. obviously, there's no time travel or anything, but just the idea that, like, the bad guys won, mm-hmm. and now you got to, like, work your way back. One criticism I have is I really enjoyed playing as the Cobra characters, but most of the missions are G.I. Joe. Mm-hmm. So it's like you might do, like, two or three G.I. Joe missions, and then you get to play as Storm Shadow or Firefly or Cobra Commander or Baroness. And I'm like... Yeah, but yeah. The, a lot of the game is playing at P, uh, PvP, so it's like yeah. you can pick whoever you want during right. that. So, um, but as far as the single player campaign, you kind of wish there would have been like a little more with. Or if it Commander. alternated, alternated more, like, yeah, like, yeah. like like a Transformers episode, like right. Decepticon Autobot, yeah. Decepticon <laughs> Autobot, <Doo-doo-doo-doo-doo>. yeah, <laughs> right. Like, and it's funny the loading screens even have like the Cobra and GI Joe emblems spinning, right. doing a little kind of, of kind of like that. And the game really is a nostalgia trip and they they mix in a lot of different characters like mainframe mm-hmm. well mainframe was the first gi joe that i ever got as a kid so the fact that him like this kind of like dopey computer programmer guy yeah gets put in the game i'm like that's cool um it was uh because you got further than i did it, yeah. did, did they have sergeant slaughter in there no they didn't no and slaughter. i would assume that that's like a licensing uh, okay, thing okay okay i think that he um it's like a WWE or okay. something like that has the rights. Because that, that era is like gone. And you know what's interesting? I never really thought of sci-fi as a character that I really cared about in G.I. Joe. But because he has like the drones and like the, you know, like scientific weapons, like the charge gun and stuff like that, he's really cool. But when G.I. Joe came out, we didn't have drones and all the technology and stuff. Right. So he was way less cool then compared to how he is now. Yeah. Um... But, like, going to the gameplay. I played through, um, you know, some of the levels. And I, I did the level that had uh, Roadblock. And so in that, basically, you're set, you have to make it, like, to the top of a mountain. And then when you get there, you have to set up these sort of uh, laser gun things. You, you set all those to you're charge. You're talking about the desert. I guess it was the yeah. desert. I thought it was sort of a mountain desert. And then um, these waves of enemies start attacking. Yeah. It's almost like, you know, you're playing like a tower defense or something. And each wave comes at you and you got to defend yourself. And I, I found myself having a hard time. I was, I was like dying over and over. I, it took me a little bit of time to get used to like the locking on yeah. with, with the gun. So I have one tip for people who play this game. The character locks on when you press the button. Right. But then... It's, but then the lock off, lock it, on comes off. It comes off. So, but most enemies only take one hit. There's a few enemies that take two hits, and there's a few enemies that take more, but they're big. So it doesn't really matter that you can't lock on. So the way you have to play this game is lock on, pop, lock on, pop, lock on, pop, and you'll have a lot better time because you'll just be taking people out. Like literally, I just lock on, shoot. See, maybe you're using a different gun than I was because I was uh, w- on that level that I'm talking yeah. about was using the uh, his electric gun or whatever yeah, it's called. That you have to hold on, and it's not I, as good because you're saying it's one shot. For me, I'm standing there shooting the guy, and he's I'm like he's not dying, he's not dying. Yeah, you know? yeah. So. I definitely think that you want to have like. The sniper rifles or the weapons that deal. I ended up using the grenades a lot. Yeah. Or you know what? I, good. You know what I was doing? I was uh, shooting the red barrels a lot. I try yeah. to get the enemies near those and blow them up and stuff yeah. like that. So there's different methods. Yeah. So the other thing is when the when the enemies come out, like in every level, you're gonna end up fighting another Joe or Cobra guy, like a playable character. Like you may end up fighting like. As Snake Eyes, you may end up fighting Storm Shadow, or you may like. There's one part in the Rasha Kage Temple where you fight uh, Scarlet. When you're fighting them, a lot of times, like they take a lot of hits, and you got to dodge. But and that's why it's really good that you have a regenerating shield, mm-hmm. because usually when I'm fighting a boss, I'll like fight him, fight him, fight him. Wait till my shield gets down and almost breaks, and then run away. That's what I did too. I kept yeah having to back off and then let right. your shield charge. Ammo is another big deal. This is a game that ha- ammo management is important, mm-hmm. and that's why it's good that you do the lock-ons and you target and stuff like that, because if you run out of ammo, it's really tough. I also noticed that like, I felt like speed was more important than health, so the characters like Scarlet, Snake Eyes, Storm Shadow, 
I liked a lot more than like the bulkier characters. Okay. I enjoyed the strategy of this game, but the thing I have to say is this game is a return to like mid-budget titles. This isn't a triple-A title. This isn't like a hundred million dollar blockbuster. It has, it's a contained experience. It's very nostalgic. It has a lot of stuff for G.I. Joe fans. It comes with like a digital art book. So you can look at how they did all the concept art for everything. And it was interesting that they made the decision that, that very early on that they would int introduce robots as the enemies for both the G.I. Joe and the Cobra levels. But the Cobra bat is, you know, Cobra has robots. G.I. Joe doesn't really have robots, but they had to do that because they wanted to stick with the aesthetic of the show that, you know, you don't shoot people. Mm -hmm. Right. Right? And all the, when all the, like, G.I. Joe and Cobra characters die, they fall down on one knee and well, get away. I was thinking, like, in the show, in, like, if, if a plane came down, you'd always see the guy come out on the parachute. Yeah. You know, so. So it was, it, it was interesting that they made that decision and they carried it through. And also, I think the soundtrack's really good. We didn't mention something that I really think we need to. The vehicle driving. The vehicle driving stages are super cool. You're driving in the Cobra tank. It has a charge shot. It has a machine gun. And it has the, the, the triggers button is missiles that hit everything. Having to charge up and shoot the other tanks and dodge dropping stalactites and sh blow up barrels and fight robots and things. And you end up fighting the helicopter is the boss of one of them. And it looks exactly like the toy and all of that. The, the tank levels are pretty cool. I feel like since this is Cinemassacre, we probably can't get through this whole review without probably mentioning the NES game. Yeah. Ryan introduced me a long time ago to the NES game. And, uh, you know, I think that that was one of the best games on the system. And I was a kid that didn't even grow up a lot with, with G.I. Joe. But there you go. You had one of the best games on the NES. Now, coming to this, it's nice to see that G.I. Joe is, like, still alive. You know what I think is funny? In this, the particular drawing that's on the back of this thing, the little helicopter that's in this drawing of this 20, 2020 action figure is a vehicle that you can pl fly around in the NES game. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, like that's crazy. These characters have been around for, for so long, like the, the legacy of Larry Hama. And... I mean, they're, they're legendary characters that we all have ingrained in our heads since we were little it's, kids. It's so funny. When they, when they did the mold of Snake Eyes, they're like, oh, we need a cheaper character. We're going to do one where the mold's just all black because the black plastic is cheaper. Just... Put him in there. Yeah, well, they did that, but, it, but then he's awesome. <laughs> and he's the most popular yeah, yeah. character. It's yeah. like... So, yeah, I mean, and and I, I feel like a lot of the feelings I have for Operation Blackout are very similar to the feelings I have about the original G.I. Joe. Because once you get into the, where are the bombs? Where do I go? How do I fight the bosses? Oh, I got to charge my weapon. I need to have this vehicle. All of that. And you're in the mode, mm -hmm. and you play that game. They have similar... Amounts of G.I. Joe nostalgia in them, <laughs> just from two different eras, right? That's actually a really good point. You know, yeah. like, like I probably, like, this game, similarly, when you're dodging right and you're using your ultimates correctly and all of that, you just play through it. It's like history is repeating itself. It's like back then they were trying to give kids that experience of, like, yeah. here's the characters you like, here's, here's all the things... Same, same thing here. And honestly, it delivered then. Like I said, it's one of the best games on the NES. And, you know, yeah. and, and, and they're doing a good job here. So Yeah, so I really liked it. Um, you know, I it played all the way through. I'm going to do some of the unlocks and stuff like that. Um, but I was, I was really happy because when, when this game came up and it's like, oh, you guys want to do this video and all of that, I'm like... I didn't even know that it was out. I didn't know about it, yeah. So I was I was happy that because we, I probably wouldn't have noticed if we didn't do this. So um, I hope that you check it out because it was it was worth it. It was it was really good and it's it got me in the mood, you know. At this, I, I'm sure there's so many people on our channel that grew up with uh, GI Joe and probably would want to you know be interested to check this yeah. out. I played it on Xbox, just. Yeah, I also yeah. played it on Xbox. I get yeah. it's yeah, and it's on Switch and it's yeah. on uh, PS4 and everything. I, it's interesting. To, I, I'd be interested to play it on the go on the Switch because I felt like it was very much the type of game that you would play on a TV. Right. I don't know what that would be like. Yeah. yeah. So I, I I would like to hear from you know somebody in the comments or whatever if they play it on Switch. How does that feel and is it good? So yeah, thanks for 
telling me so much about this and so, so much about the, <laughs> right. the the lore of GI Joe and everything. Um, I feel like I I learned a lot here, and you know, knowing is half the battle. Yo Joe, yo Joe. <laughs> I, we had to. I'm sorry. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> had to be in there. Yeah. Cobra. Ah! <laughs>